Good morning and welcome as we study the Word of God together again. And it is a, a joyous day. There's snow that's fallen and we're continuing to live through uh, what it's like to enjoy that. And above all else, to, to grow in enjoying Jesus. To grow in, in spreading the love and the knowledge and the truth of Jesus Christ. That people would come to know Him and love Him and serve Him as their Savior by faith. Uh, we're in the book of Acts, chapter 11, and we've been looking at this uh, new insight and understanding that uh, the church is gaining into the plan and purpose of God. And that is that salvation through the work of Jesus Christ is not just for Jewish people. It is for the Gentiles. And as we uh, get into our word to get, uh, today, we're, we're going to look at verse, uh, verse 19 of Acts 11. So would you pray with me? Oh, Lord, please minister your grace to our hearts and show us, O oh God, where we need to be generous, not just in action, but generous in our understanding of the gospel. Show us, O oh Lord, where we also need to be precise and crisp and clear and focused in understanding what this good news in Jesus Christ is all about. For not only do you say that you are the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except by you, Lord Jesus, and yet we are to be those who generously spread and share the, the, the message of salvation and call people to faith and trust in you. Would you help us, O oh Lord, to embrace you as the only way and the necessity of personal faith in you and at the same time, the boldness and the kindness and the eagerness to make you known to our neighbors and the nations. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right, so Acts chapter 11 verse 19 says this, now those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except Jews. Now, you might think, ah, pastor, this is going against everything that just transpired between Peter, Cornelius, the circumcision party, and the believers as they now received and embraced the fact that the gospel, God, is ministering the grace of Jesus Christ by faith to those who are Gentile. Well, not only did in yesterday's message, uh, I talked about how this good news is for all who will believe. Now, we're, we're kind of backtracking. What do we have to see in verse 19 is uh, way back up uh, in verse, uh, let's see, up in Acts chapter 10, before, before the vision to Cornelius, Acts chapter 9, um, when there's the, the church uh, throughout all Judea, chapter 9, verse 31, throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace. And Peter now began to move freely, and he went to uh, the saints who were in Lydda. We learned about this in verse 32, and he healed a man by the name of Aeneas. And then he went to Joppa and healed a, a woman, a follower of Jesus, by the name of Tabitha or Dorcas. And then we had the whole Cornelius episode in chapter 10. And so now that we're here, what we have to understand is this is not... Uh, all happening linearly and sequentially. Verse 19 is going back before and at the beginning of when Peter is now going to see Aeneas and Tabitha and Cornelius. And so Luke is going back and saying, okay, so we've followed the rabbit trail of what happened with Peter. Now let's go back and prepare to follow another way in which God is working. And so this is just a reminder that uh, God is not going back on his word. The disciples are not reverting back to old practices and beliefs. No, we're picking up again uh, back when the church had peace 
because of the scattering of the persecution that unfolded when Stephen was martyred. And so here we have believers that are going as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, and so they're scattering about, and they're, speak, they're starting out by speaking the word to no one except Jews. But we know, as with Peter, that this is not the limited plan and purpose of God because they're starting to spread. And this gospel, this good news, the message of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ is for all who will believe among the nations. And so I just want to jump back and remind us as we kind of bring this segment to a close and we prepare to the, uh, this weekend to uh, get ready for uh, a new look as we pick up in verse 20 on Monday. While the message of Christ was spreading among the people of the nations, so we have the Jewish people that are becoming followers of Christ. Now we have Cornelius, who uh, now the gospel is going to the Gentiles. It is also spreading among the nations of the people. So it isn't just the people, although the gospel is for the people, but it's for the people that are among the nations of every tribe and tongue, tongue and, and, and nation around the world. And, and this is really the summary. I, I, I butchered it a little bit yesterday, but it's a, it's a good reminder for us what the gospel great commission is. In Matthew 28, this is before Jesus, uh, one of the last times that Jesus taught his disciples before he was taken up. Now we uh, see in the beginning of cha chapter one of Acts that, that that is the last time. And Jesus says, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the earth, the nations. This is the gospel commission from Matthew 28. I'm going to read it this time so I don't goof it up. Matthew 28, verse 18 says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some still doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Think of that. No authority higher and more superior than Jesus. Go, therefore, by the authority that he possesses, that he is. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. That's what we see transpiring here in Acts starting in Acts 9, and the, the rest and the peace and the sending of Peter to Aeneas and Tabitha and Cornelius. This is what we see happening and be beginning to, you know, as Luke follows another trail of this new understanding of how the gospel spreads, that they are going to only the Jews, but we're going to see very soon it is not just the Jews, it is all the nations. This is the mandate of the gospel. This is the mandate commissioning of all of us who named the name of Jesus Christ. And so as I've been reminding us, you know, we set up these boundaries. We set up these criteria by which uh, people can and cannot be a Christian. You know, one criteria for some is that we are automatically in regardless of faith in Jesus. That somehow universalism rules the day. That does not jive with the teaching of scripture. It is God's grace through Christ and his work, but it is through our response of faith that one is saved. And yet, we also set up a criteria that says, oh, someone may profess Jesus, but their life still looks a mess. They still wrestle with besetting sins and so on and so forth. And, and they take very seriously the, the we will not persist in sin. Uh, Hebrews talks about this. John talks about it in his first letter, 1 John. However, the reality is that we will continue to battle and wage war against our old nature, our old habits. Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 7 where he says, The very thing I want to do is not what I do. And what I don't want to do is the very thing I do. We are in the midst of a battle to grow in Christ. And so the opposite criteria, you've got those that just say everybody's automatically in. And then we say, oh, you can be in, but the only way you can really be in is if you're trusting Jesus and you follow all these guidelines. This is what the whole message to the Galatians seeks to undermine 
Um, that's what, you know, he, Paul writes and says it's for freedom that Christ has set you free. Uh, do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. In other words, it is Christ alone. And it is for Christ alone, by Christ alone. And, and so we are to be these kinds of folks that are uh, generous in our sharing and speaking and spreading the good news of Jesus Christ and boldly and kindly calling people to faith. Not just, oh, you know, Jesus loves you and you're good. Jesus loves you. Now you need to respond to the love he has for you and shown for you as he demonstrated it by dying for us while we were yet sinners. So that's kind of a summary of where we are as we kind of bring this section of Acts to a close and we prepare to now move on in another direction because now, very soon, Paul and Barnabas are going to take the primary uh, focus. That They're going to be the main emphasis of Acts. And as, as you might know, maybe not, that Paul and Barnabas were called to go to the Gentiles. They bring the gospel to the nations, and we're about to see that now from verse 19 on in Acts chapter 11. Peter, yes, now it's going to be Paul. Would you pray with me? Lord, help us to understand and embrace the not only the narrowness of the gospel, but the broadness of the gospel. That we enter in through the one way, but once in, it is a broad and joyous land of growing and walking and savoring and enjoying you. Lord, call and use us and work through us to call people to come and enter in through that narrow way that is through faith in your work and who you are, O Lord Jesus. And so I pray that you'd also give us rest this weekend. Let your peace rest over us and ready us to gather with your people to worship and celebrate and rejoice in you. This Sunday morning, we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. So as I bid you adieu for the weekend, I do want to remind you to gather with the people of God. Get with a community of believers where you will be fed the word of God. You will be strengthened and encouraged in your walk with Christ. You will be called to live a life of repentance as you seek to uh, also be renewed in the, the grace of God through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We would love to have you join us at Trinity Presbyterian Church. And it, you can join us online uh, via live stream. You can join us in person at our 11 a.m. service. But if you already are a part of a family of believers, a local community of disciples, get involved, get invested. Pour your life into that fellowship and through that fellowship for the spread of the knowledge of Christ. Well, I look forward to seeing you in worship, and I look forward to seeing you again Monday morning. May the Lord be with you.